Hello everyone. Hey, this is Pastor Terry here, and I want to welcome you to Summit Church Fenton's Midweek Bible Study. I'm so glad you joined me this evening. You know, I've been thinking about uh, everything that's been going on here in our country over the last many months. And you know, with the COVID uh, stuff going on and the social distancing and and the economy is in, in, in very difficult shape and so many people have lost their jobs and so many stores going out of business and, and then the social unrest on top of that. And, and uh, you know, it's just been a very, very difficult, challenging, perplexing time for so many people. And you know, in the midst of all of that, it's real easy to get beaten down and discouraged and so I just want to share a message with you this evening that, that I trust will uh, lift your spirits and be encouraging to you. Uh, hey, with that in mind, let's go to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. And uh, this was uh, uh, written by the Apostle Paul. And, you know, he, he went through a lot of difficult, perplexing things. You know, uh, from the time he got saved... I mean, he just, I mean, he had so much persecution that came against him and, and, uh, you know, so many tough times and, 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 and he got beat up a lot and many perils in his life that, that he went through. And, uh, but, but with that in mind, notice what he wrote here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8. He said this, he said, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Now you think about the attitude, the good attitude that, that he had. I mean, in the midst of trouble on every side, perplexed, uh, persecuted, cast down. But in the middle of all of that, he, he said, you know, I'm not distressed, I'm not in despair, I'm not forsaken, I'm not destroyed. I mean, he, he had a lot of bad things going on in his life, but he kept a, a good attitude in the middle of it. And then in, in verse 13, and that's the verse I really wanna, wanna get to, he, he, right after he said all these things about being troubled but not distressed, perplexed but not in despair, persecuted, not forsaken, cast down, not destroyed. He says this, the key to it all. He says, having, we having the same spirit of faith. See, the apostle Paul was able to say the things that he did because he had a spirit of faith about him. And, and when people have a spirit of faith about them, they can be troubled on every side, but not distressed. They can be perplexed, but not in despair. They can be persecuted, but not forsaken, and cast down, but not destroyed. See, that's the result of what happens when a person has a, a, a spirit of faith. And so that's what I want to talk to you tonight about, is having a spirit of faith. Okay? Now, you know, uh, the, as you study the subject of faith, there, there's principles of faith, and then there's a spirit of faith. And, uh, you know, the principles of faith, and, and I'm not going to go in and, and go through all of those here this evening, but, you know, the principles of faith, you know, hearing the word of God, believing the word of God, and, and these sorts of things, and having a right confession, and so on and so forth, those things are very, very important. But, but something that is just as important, and in some ways I think even more important than the principles of faith, is having a spirit of faith. You know, I've actually seen people over the years who have had, who have, who have you know, uh, walked in the principles of faith, you know, to certain levels or certain degrees, but, but they didn't have a spirit of faith really about them, and and those people, you know, e even though they had some principles of faith that they that they had going on in their lives, but but yet they didn't have a spirit of faith. They never really were totally victorious in their life. And so uh, it's important that we have a spirit of faith. Now, you know, uh, one minister said this, and it's so good. He said that 
he said that the, the principles of faith are taught, but the spirit of faith is caught. Now you think about that. The principles of faith, and, and they are important. Don't misunderstand me. The principles of faith are very important. Okay, you know, hearing the word of God, believing the word of God, you know, acting on it. Th those are very important. Having a right confession and all that is very good. Uh, but those are pr those principles are are taught. But a spirit of faith is caught. And you know, uh, how do you catch? A spirit of faith. And that's what I want to talk about here tonight is a spirit of faith. How do you catch a spirit of faith? Well, let me ask you this. How, how does somebody catch a cold? You know, and you know, and in the midst of this COVID stuff going on, how, how does somebody catch COVID? Well, being around somebody that's that's got it. You know, catch a cold by being around somebody that's got it, or catch the flu, being around somebody that's got it. Well, you know, I'm I'm Using, you know, sickness as an example, and, you know, I don't like sickness and disease. I don't know anybody that does, but, but, uh, but, but I use that example to just get a point across to you that you catch a cold or whatever by being around somebody that, that has one. Well, you catch a spirit of faith by being around people who have a spirit of faith. I tell you what, I've watched this over the many years you get around somebody that has a spirit of faith about them, that spirit of faith on them can jump off on you and just just lift you up. And so so that's what you need to do is hang around people who have a spirit of faith. Find people, you know, who, who have that about them and, and hang around them. You don't want to hang around people that are in the mully grubs all the time, that are that are down and out all the time and always down in the mouth and always, you know, grumbling and crabbing and complaining. I tell you what, you get around those people, that, you know, complaining attitude and that, you know, down in the mouth stuff, that'll jump right off on you too. You don't want to be around that. Find you some people who have a spirit of faith about them and hang around them and let that spirit of faith that's on them get off on you. And, and you know, something else that's very important to do is is hang around Bible characters who have a spirit of faith. You say, what do you mean, Pastor Terry? Well, go into the Bible, and, and there, the Bible is full of, 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 of people who had a spirit of faith about them, and, and go in the Bible and read about them and study their lives and, and how they handled situations and, and difficult situations and, and let that spirit of faith that's on them jump right off the Bible and get on you. It's like the Apostle Paul. I mean, I've already said it, but I'll say it again. That man had a spirit of faith. We want to hang around the Apostle Paul. We want to read, the, you know, he penned, what, half or almost two-thirds of the New Testament. You know, we we read read the, the epistles that he wrote, you know, and let that spirit of faith that's on him jump off on you. I mean, just like we already read, here's a man who's troubled on every side, but he said, hey, I'm not distressed. He's perplexed, but he says, you know, I'm not in despair. You know, he says he's being persecuted, but not forsaken. He says, we've been cast down, but we're not destroyed. See, that's somebody you want to hang around. The apostle Paul, you know, here's a man who, who did something good. Remember, he cast a demon out of a, 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 a girl, a fortune teller and whatnot. You know, he, he winds up in prison, in the worst part of the prison. And at midnight, instead of grumbling and crabbing and complaining, he's praising God and singing hymns to the Lord. You know, my goodness, talk about a spirit of faith. And, and of course, that spirit of faith caused a, a, a earthquake in that prison and you know good things happened as a result and 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 and, and the Philippian church was was born out of that and and so anyway uh, the Apostle Paul uh, spirit of faith about him you know he's the one that you know penned we just talked about it you know have a having a have a spirit of faith and you know uh, something else, that, that Paul, uh, some other verses that he wrote that just encouraged me, like Philippians 4.13. Philippians 4.13. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
Now, I mean, that that's spirit of faith talking right there. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He also uh, wrote 1 Corinthians 15, 57. And he said, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, a spirit of faith, there's victory all over a spirit of faith. I mean, there's strength all over a spirit of faith. You know, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He says, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in 2 Corinthians, I mean, he maintains his spirit of faith all through his ministry. I mean, in 2 Corinthians 2.14, he says, but now thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ. I, think about that always causes us to triumph in Christ. I like that word always. Always means always. In the midst of any circumstance, any any troubling, distressing, perplexing, you know, circumstance, uh, you know, the Apostle Paul had this attitude, this spirit of faith, and he says, thanks be to God. See, a spirit of faith will be thankful to God in the midst of any and all circumstances. And he says, thanks be to God, who always, always, all the time, always causes us to triumph in Christ. And so we want to hang around the Apostle Paul and people like him who have this, this can-do attitude. And, uh, and I tell you what, that's a spirit of faith. And uh, uh, you know, we need to be around these kind of people. Let that spirit of faith get off on us. And... Uh, and, 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 and <laughs> Uh, we could be victorious then in the midst of any, any circumstance and triumph in the middle of any circumstance. So hang around the Apostle Paul. Ha you know, hang around him in the scripture. You know, read after him. And, and, uh, uh, and, and that spirit of faith that's on him will jump off on you. I'm telling you it will. And, uh, you know, so, so I was thinking about other Bible characters who had a spirit of faith about him. And there's so many of them and there's no way in the time I have I could cover them all. But I just picked out a few that 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 I, I thought would be an encouragement to you. You know, I think about Joshua and Caleb. You know, in the Old Testament, remember Moses sent out the 12 spies to spy out Canaan. And those 12 spies, they went over into Canaan and spied out the land and, and uh, you know, it's interesting, all 12 of those spies saw the same things, okay? And and listen, there were some challenges over in the land of Canaan, and there were giants over there, and, and uh, you know, it, 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 it was, you know, what does all the spies saw, you know, they all saw the same thing. And, uh, but when they brought back the report to Moses, it's interesting 10 of the spies came back without a spirit of faith. They came back, you know, oh, it's tough over there. It's a, it's a difficult land. Uh, there's a lot of uh, obstacles. You know, there's a, the inhabitants of the, the land. And they're giants. And we just, we're just not, we're not going to be able to, to do it. Well, those people didn't have a spirit of faith. But I tell you what. Joshua and Caleb came back and they had that good report. And remember, Caleb said, he said, we are well able to take the land. It's interesting. All 12 saw the same thing. Okay. 10 of them did not have a spirit of faith, but Joshua and Caleb, they had the spirit of faith about them. And I tell you what, when you have a spirit of faith about you, you can look at difficult circumstances and you can make the statement like uh, like Caleb did, we are well able, we are well able, you know, with God's help, we are well able to take the land. It's interesting, you know, those 10 spies, you know, from my study of it, those 10 spies, they, they didn't ever get to enter that land. And that 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 generation uh, that, that, that believed those spies, those 10 spies with that bad, you know, report, they didn't get to enter the land of, uh, of Canaan. But Joshua and Caleb, they did. Why? Because they had a spirit of faith about them. How are you going to enter into the blessings that God has? 
Well, you're sure not going to get in there to those blessings with uh, without a spirit of faith. You know, if you got a mully grub down in the dumps attitude about you all the time, you know, uh, you're not going to walk in any of the blessing and victory of God. So get a spirit of faith about you. And no matter what the circumstances look like, you know, somebody said, well, Pastor Terry, you know, circumstances are just so bad and just so, so tough and don't know what I'm going to do. So look, that's what faith is all about. You know, fa faith doesn't look at the circumstance. Faith looks at 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 God and and what God can do in the midst of that circumstance and and I don't care how bleak and how bad it is that, that's what a spirit of faith is all about rise up in the midst of adverse circumstances and just say bless God we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us we are like Caleb said we are well able to overcome this obstacle we are well able to take the land see that's a spirit can't, can't just Sense that spirit of faith that's right here right now. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He, he always gives us the victory. He always causes us to triumph. No matter what the circumstance is, no matter what the doctor's report is, no matter what, what the bad news is. Hey, you know, the devil's got a whole lot of bad news, but I tell you what, in the holy written word of God, God's got a whole lot of good news. Let's grab a hold of that good news and, and, and have that spirit of faith about us. What do you say? Okay. So that's, I mean, we could stop right now and be blessed, but hey, let's go on and, and, and look at some more, a few more. Uh, what about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? What about them? Remember the, they're known as the Hebrew children, you know, over in the book of Daniel. And, uh, uh, they were young men, uh, probably, you know, in their late teens, maybe early twenties, whatever. But, uh, but, but anyway, remember the king, uh, what, 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 whatever, whatever age they were, they were, they were uh, young men. And, uh, but be that as it may, they, uh, the, the, the king made a, a decree that, uh, he, you know, he, Nebuchadnezzar, he built a gold image of himself, you know, and he made a decree that whenever the music played, that everybody had to bow down and worship the gold image. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, said, we're not going to do that. And when word came to the... And, and actually what Nebuchadnezzar had said is that anyone who doesn't bow down when the music plays to the gold image, those people are going into that fiery furnace. You know, remember that? Into that fiery furnace. And so uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, we're not going to bow. We're not bowing down to the gold image. And so when Nebuchadnezzar got word of it, he had uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego called in and, and he gave him a second chance. He said, look, we're going to play this music again and, uh, and, and, you know, we're going to stoke this furnace up seven times hotter, hotter than it is right now. But now when the music plays, if you bow down, you won't have to go in the furnace. But if you don't, into that hot, fiery furnace you're going to go. And you know what? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these guys had a spirit of faith about them. I mean, they had a spirit of faith. And they said to the king, they said to Nebuchadnezzar, they said, look, all right, we're not going to bow down to your gold image. We're just not going to do it because we know that our God is well able to deliver us from that fiery furnace. Now, that's a spirit of faith talking right there. It, it really is. And we know God is able to deliver us. But then they went on and they said this. They said, but even if he doesn't deliver us, we're still not going to bow down. Now, you talk about a spirit of faith. I mean, that. I, mean, I like these, these three Hebrew children. I like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, I, I like Joshua and Caleb. I like, you know... Joshua, like I said already, or Caleb said, we're well able to take the land. I like uh, the three Hebrew children when, when, when they say, we're not going to bow because we know God is able to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, but even, see, even if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow down to you, king. We're not going to bow down to that image. And you know what? The music played again. They didn't bow down. And into the fiery furnace they went. And it was, like I said, stoked up seven times hotter than before. 
But guess what? The that fourth man showed up in that fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar went down. He looked in, you know, into that furnace, and he said, "I thought I put th put three men in there, but said, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. There's a fourth one in there. And he, he looks like the Son of God. Hey, Jesus showed up. That second member of the Trinity, Jesus showed up in the midst of that fire. See, God won't." always deliver you from going into the fiery furnace, but he'll deliver you through the fiery furnace. And I tell you what, the, the Hebrew children, they had that spirit of faith about them. They're in the midst of that fiery furnace and there Jesus shows up. Glory to God. And, 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 and that spirit of faith that they had brought them through that furnace and uh, they didn't get burned and they came out. They didn't even smell of smoke. You think about that miracle. My goodness gracious. And the Lord delivered them from that fiery furnace and it shook Nebuchadnezzar up that that that, that he 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 apparently got saved out of the whole the whole business and turned turned to the Lord turned to the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and and then Shadrach Meshach and Abednego got a promotion on top of it all. See what a spirit of faith can do for you. I mean, it can cause people to it can not only cause you to be delivered but it and get promoted, but it can cause people to repent and get saved. I mean, my goodness. But but they had a spirit of faith about them, you know. Uh, uh, we're not going to bow down, you know. Bad circumstance here. We're not going to bow down. God will deliver us. And even if he doesn't, we're going to serve him anyway. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, like the like Job. I don't have him in my notes, but he just came up in my heart. You know, Job. I mean, he went through some stuff. And, you know, but but he made the statement in the midst of it. He said, even though God slay me, and we know it wasn't God slaying him, but this is the attitude he had. He said, he said, even if God slays me, I'm still going to serve him, you know. Well, see, that's a spirit of faith talking. And you look at the end of Job. I mean, God gave him, what, twice as much as he had before. <laughs> Ah, glory to God, twice as much as he had before. See, I tell you what, you start living by with a spirit of faith about you, you start freaking people out. I mean, not only sinners, I mean, they're, they're kind of all, all, they're freaked out anyway, but I mean, you'll start freaking out, uh, you know, Christians, you know, that, that, that don't understand anything about a spirit of faith or don't want to live by a spirit of faith. And you get adverse circumstances come at you. You got COVID over here. You got this over there and, you know, economy and upheaval. <laughs> you got all this. I'm not laughing at those are terrible, horrible things. I'm not saying that they're not. I'm just saying, see what happens? You get a spirit of faith on you. I mean, you know, you could you could laugh in the midst of, of adverse circumstances. You really can. You know, I, I don't have him in my notes either, but Daniel, think about Daniel. You know, uh, the king made the decree that, you know, if, if you continue to, to pray, you know, to God, you're going in the lion's den. And, uh, and long story short, what did Daniel do? He went back over to his house, opened the wind, and prayed to the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. And yay, hey, he went in the lion's den. God won't, you know, he, he didn't promise to keep you out of the lion's den. But I tell you what, you got a spirit of faith in you. And he'll send the angel in there. God will send the angel in there to shut the lion's mouth so, so the lion can't, can't, can't eat you. And that's what he did for Daniel. Daniel, that was that spirit of faith that he had about, him. you know, when he went, you know, the king said, don't pray. And Daniel went over there and he prayed to the Lord and, and God delivered him. Glory to God. So look, I'm not minimizing any of these, the COVID or any of these terrible things that's going on in the economy. I'm not minimizing them and saying that they're not bad. They are. But I tell you what, God's greater and uh, we, we have a spirit of faith about us. We can, I can, we, I mean, we can laugh, right? And have joy, the joy of the Lord and have victory and triumph right in the middle of all, of all this stuff. And, and I tell you what, that's what this nation needs right now. They need to see Christians with a spirit of faith about them. Glory to God, not grumbling, complaining, down in the dumps, woe is me and all that. But no, 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 they, the nation needs to see the Christians with a spirit of faith on them. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Glory to God. Well, anyway, and then here's another one, David. Think about David. He's, you know, that young, he's a young boy. And uh, he goes out there to take food out to his brothers, you know, and they're out there, you know, facing Goliath, you know, that giant. 
Now, I won't go through the whole story, but just when David shows up, <laughs> he shows up out there and, and a giant is facing the armies of, of God and that giant, Goliath, he's defying the armies of the living God. You don't defy the armies of the living God and get away with it, but that's what Goliath was doing. And that whole army of Israel, they were out there, including David's brothers, you know, and so forth. And none of them had a spirit of faith on them or about them. And none of them really understood the covenant that, you know, that, that, that Israel had with the Lord. But David, young boy, he come from probably a te late teenager, you know, whatever, late teens, whatever it was. But he comes out there. He knew God. He knew the covenant that he had with God. And he's, you know, he's saying, what's going on here? What's up with this situation? You know, why is everybody trembling? And because you study into that story. I mean, when David showed up, the, his brothers and the, those soldiers were saying, have you seen that, that, have you seen that giant over there? And, and David, when he finds out a little bit about the circumstance and the giant, he says, he said this, now listen to the spirit of faith talking here, you know. As a spirit of faith will, will, will speak and a spirit of faith will act. <laughs> and David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he defies the armies of the living God? Woo, glory to God. I mean, you know, so David, when he called him an uncircumcised Philistine, that indicated he knew his covenant and he knew that nobody defies the armies of uh, 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 of, of, of the living God and gets away with it. And that's what Goliath, that giant was doing. But I mean, boy, that blessed me. I'm going to say it again. He said, David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine talking about Goliath that he defies the army of the living God. <laughs> and, and long story short, I mean, that spirit of faith that was on David, he rose up in that and he faced down that giant, you know, and, 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 and long story short, uh, uh, somebody died in that fight between David and Goliath and it wasn't David. <laughs> Let me tell you what, the spirit of faith, glory to God, will kill any giant. Any giant that arises in your life and any giant that arises in this land. I tell you what, if we as all, all, all of us as Christians would just rise up in faith, I tell you what, any giant that comes against against the United States or any giant that comes against you in your personal life. You keep a spirit of faith about you. I tell you what, any giant can be destroyed. Glory to God. Killed. Graveyard dead. <laughs> if we'll just keep a spirit of faith about us. Glory to God. And then, then of course, you got Elisha. I thought about him, you know, when, when he was surrounded by the enemy. You know, and his young servant said, what are we going to do? 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 Remember that? And, uh, and and so Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Lord, open his eyes. Let him see that, that those that be with us are more than those that be with the enemy. And, you know, of course, uh, uh, then God opened the servant's eyes and he saw that, yeah, Elisha and his servant, you know, they were surrounded by the enemy. Things didn't look good. But, but once the, once the young man could see in the, over in the spirit that the, the hill, the hills there were surrounded with the chariots of fire, the chariots of God, the angels of God, <laughs> glory to God. Think about that. And remember what happened that, that, that enemy, that, 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 that enemy, uh, army, that, that band, that army that had, was there against Elisha. You know, they, they, I think they were blinded and, and, <laughs> I tell you what, they were blinded and, and Elisha, you know, uh, uh, I think led him into the camp or whatever it was. But the point is, I tell you what, a spirit of faith, I tell you what, a spirit of faith will cause the angels to start moving, glory to God, a spirit of faith. I tell you what, will blind the enemy. <laughs> glory to God. Glory to God. Boy, that, this is, I'm just so thrilled. I mean, that's what happened, the spirit of faith, spirit of faith. It, it, it caused, caused the enemy to be blinded. He won't know. The enemy won't know what's going on. I tell you, spirit of faith will cause Satan, the devil, to be blinded. He won't know what's going He won't know what hit him. Glory to God. By the time you operate in a spirit of faith and God gets to moving and the angels get to moving. <laughs> and, 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 but you see, the spirit of faith was, was all over Elisha. And he said, Lord, 
Open my servant's eyes that he may see, listen to this, that those that be with us are more than those that be with the enemy. And the same thing's true today. I tell you what, no matter what's coming against you, realize this, the forces that be with us, God and the angels are greater than anything the enemy can throw at us. Praise God. And then I thought about this. Uh, remember, remember that lady uh, in the Old Testament? I, I, I think it was under Elisha's ministry where, uh, where, where, the, where her, her child died. Remember that? Very sad situation. And uh, uh, long story short, when the child died, she went over to Elisha, the prophet, you know, and, uh, and as she showed up, he, he, he asked her, and I'm just condensing this, putting my own words. So well, how, how's everything going? Now her son is dead, but guess what she said? She said, it is well, it is well. See, somebody with a spirit of faith can be in a, a, a devastating circumstance even one of the worst circumstances that any parent could ever face is the death of a child. But this woman had a spirit of faith about her, and she went over to the to the to Elisha to the prophet, and she got over there. And he said, "How's everything going?" And she said, "It is well." See, that's somebody that has a spirit of faith in the midst of adverse circumstances. It is well. See, faith calls things that be not as though they were. And long story short, her child was raised back to life. <laughs> Glory to God. So it, I tell you what, it's to our advantage to have a spirit of faith about us. So I just don't feel like having a spirit of faith, Pastor Terry. You can't afford not to have a spirit of faith about you, okay? And listen, that's what faith really is all about. When you don't feel like it, you don't feel like, you know, I just don't feel like, I just don't feel like. Faith has, look, faith has nothing to do with feelings, okay? Here's what faith is really all about is when you're in the, I just don't feel like it, Pastor Terry. I've been trudging through the heat and through the cold. Oh, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. When you're in that, see, here's what a spirit of faith will do. A spirit of faith will rise right up above all of that. Glory to God. And, and in the midst of all that, when you don't feel like it, when you'd like to go in and go to bed and pull the covers over your head, you know, and you just on purpose rise up, bless God, and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Thanks be to God who always gives me the victory, who always causes me to triumph. The powers of God that be with me are more than the powers that be against me, and so on. And well, I'm well able to, to, to take the land, can do all things through Christ. That's what you do, even though you don't feel like it. I tell you what, you... You do that, I, I mean, can't you sense it coming across? I mean, uh, I mean, glory to God, coming across the airwaves there. I mean, you just don't know we don't feel like it a lot of times, you know? But hey, you get get out of that bed, and stand up on your feet and get dressed and, and bless God. Just, 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 just quote the word of God right in the midst of the, difficult circumstance. All right. You get what I, you get what I'm talking about, but Hey, let me close with this. You know, our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew eleven twenty two, 22, uh, because in, in verses 11, 23, 24, he gives the, uh, principles of faith. And much of the time we look at Mark 11, 23, 24, you know, whosoever shall say in this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he saith and so on and so forth. We, and we spend so much time on, on, on Mark 11, 23, 24, and that's good. But I think Mark 22 gets overlooked sometimes. And really, I think Mark 22 is the key to really uh, uh, flowing properly in Mark, uh, Mark 11, 23 and 24. We need to get verse 22. And, and, and oftentimes this gets overlooked, but 
Jesus said, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Now, what is he saying there? Have a spirit of faith about you. Have faith in God. And, uh, and that's what we all need to, need to have is faith in God. Have faith in God. That's what Jesus was saying. You know, have faith in the Heavenly Father. That's what he was telling us to do. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Let's have faith in God no matter what we're going to, through. Let's have faith in God. And that's, I mean, that's a spirit of faith right there, just in a nutshell. Have faith in God. Uh, you know, as I close, I want to close with this. Uh, one of the most phenomenal testimonies I've ever heard. Uh, back years ago, uh, and I alluded to this last week, but I tell you, what, I want to talk about it just a little bit. Uh, there, there is a, a fantastic evangelist named R.W. Shambach. Now, some of you will remember him. Some of you might not, but fantastic evangelist. I mean, he was a preacher's preacher. I mean, this man could preach. And I used to listen to him back in the in the seventies and. In early 80s, he had a 15-minute radio. Uh, I get happy just thinking about it. He had a 15-minute radio show uh, every evening during the week, and I I I listen almost every evening. And I mean, sometimes I'd go in there after a long day at school or whatever it was, and tough day, or and and, and you know. By the time he got done with me in 15 minutes, I mean I was ready to just dance around my mother's living room. I mean. R.W. Shambach, and boy, he could preach, I tell you what, and uh, we could use some preaching like, like, like his preaching again in this land, I tell you, but at the end of every one of his broadcasts, he would say, before he signed off, he would say, you don't have any trouble, all you need is faith in God, <laughs> and, you know, at first, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know, I, you know, I just, he said it, and then the next night he said it, the next night he said it, and every night for months and years as I listened, he'd sign off every broadcast. He'd say, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. I mean, and that, I mean, that just right there, that just get, gets you going just listening to that. And if you could hear him say it, I mean, he said it. I mean, there was an anointing of God on him when he'd say that. And uh, I don't even come close to doing it justice. You ought to go on YouTube and listen to some of his 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 messages. But but years later, I, you know, I wondered where he got that. You don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. But I heard him tell years later, many many years, I guess two decades later, I finally heard the story behind that. And what happened is he was preaching up in Buffalo. I heard him give this tell this story. He, he was uh, up in Buffalo preaching and he got invited, I think it was over to Niagara Falls after the service, to a, a man's house for, for dinner. And so he, he went over there and uh, him and I guess his team, his evangelistic team went over there and uh, uh, to Niagara Falls, which is quite a, quite a bit of a, a little drive. But anyway, they went over there to, to this man's house and it's a, a nice house and went in and and he said that the, the, the food was just phenomenal. There was fried chicken and all kinds of good stuff. And so he said that, you know, of course, he, he, he filled his plate to the full and he was getting ready to, you know, to eat his food and bite into that chicken when this guy that was, uh, you know, the owner of that house began to tell this story. And he said, and it was such a awesome story that Brother Shabak, who wanted, he wanted that chicken, he, he put the chicken down because what this, the story this guy was uh, uh, telling was better than the chicken. Uh, think about that. And so here's what the guy said. He said, Brother Shambach, he said, uh, he said, uh, some years ago, he said, uh, he said, I was, I was doing just fine. He said, I had a good job. I, I had a, a good amount of money in the bank. He said my house was about three-fourths paid off. He said I'd never been sick a day in my life and everything was wonderful. And he said just that quick, he said I was struck with spinal meningitis. 
He said, I was, I was paralyzed. My whole body was paralyzed. He said, he said they, that I, I had to go in the hospital. He said the medical bills started mounting up. He said the, 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 the health insurance, he said he had great health insurance, but the bills got to the point where they was maxing out the health insurance. And this went on for some like three, something like three months. And, and he's in the hospital and the bank accounts dwindling and, and, and then, then uh, rheumatoid arthritis set in and the, the pain, he's in terrible pain, continuously paralyzed, all of that in the hospital, the money's dwindling and had to, had to mortgage his house, and, and, and he's laying there, <laughs> he's laying there in the hospital, and, and, and they gave him up to die, and so he said he was in a comatose state, and he said he couldn't communicate with anybody that was in the room, but he knew everything that was going on in the room, and finally it got so bad that they sent in the Catholic priest, he came in, and he gave this man, he said, Brother Shambach, they gave me the last rites. And this priest, he said, gave me the last rites. He finished this, the little ceremony. He closed his briefcase and latched it. He got up and he walked out the door and closed the door. And he said, Brother Shambach, I lay there paralyzed. I knew that that priest had walked out the door and closed it. And as soon as that priest walked out that door and closed it, he said another priest came walking in through the wall. <laughs> Glory to God. And, and he wasn't dressed in black. He was dressed in a white flowing robe. And he said, I didn't know who he was. I just knew that one priest just went out the door. And now this other priest comes walking through the wall in a white robe. And he said, I didn't know who he was. And he said, he came over to my bedside, bent over, put his lips next to my ear and called me by my name and said, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. Think about that. And of course, he still didn't know who, who this, this priest was, but that's what the priest said. He said, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. And he's thinking to himself, he said, Brother Shambach, I was thinking to myself, what do you mean I don't have any trouble? I mean, my, I'm sick, I'm, 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 I'm paralyzed, I have rheumatoid arthritis, I've lost all my money. The, the other priest was just here and gave me the last rites. And now you're telling me that, you know, he couldn't talk, say, talk and he was thinking this. He said, now, now this, this priest is telling me I don't have any trouble. All I need is faith in God. But then he said, these were the next words that this, this other priest in the white robe said. He said, I am Jesus of Nazareth. And I've come to heal you. <laughs> Glory to God. Think about that. Jesus walked. <laughs> Jesus doesn't use doors. He is the door, glory to God. He came walking through that wall, called him by his name, said, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. He said, I'm Jesus of Nazareth, and I've come to heal you, glory to God. Woo, I'm, I'm half shouting, and half crying, powerful story. And then he said, that Jesus told him, he said, I'm gonna walk out of this room he said, he said, you get up out of this bed. He said, you go in there and you shave. And then you go to the first bookstore that you come to and buy a Bible and start reading in, in the gospel according to St. John. And in there, you will find the way to eternal life. Glory to God. And then he said that that priest Jesus stood back up, turned around, and walked right back out through the wall away, came in, and glory to God. Woo! Jesus is cool. I mean, that's just, that's the way he operates. Glory to God. Praise God. Out, out he went. Just like he did, at, you know, that night after he was raised from the dead, there the disciples were gathered together to the doors being shut. Jesus appeared right in the midst. Now, he don't use doors. He is the door. He just goes right through the wall. Glory to God. But, but anyway, the guy said he, he walked right back out the way he came in. And uh, so he said he wanted to be obedient to what the Lord had told him. So he, uh, 
he, 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 you know, he came, he came out of that coma and he, he pulled the IVs out and all of that, you know, the IVs, he got out of the bed. He said he went in to shave like the Lord had told him to. He said he felt like he had just eaten 12 T-bone steaks, steaks and he hadn't eaten for like three months. He, you see, that's how the Lord, that Lord will leave you, you know, feel, feeling like you've eaten three, you know, 10, 13, whatever T-bone steaks. Anyway, so he shaved and he said about that time, the nurse came tippy-toeing in because she, she didn't see Jesus. She just saw that other priest go out. She expected to come in to was going to pull the sheets over this guy's head and he's in the bathroom shaving glory to God and uh so so it freaked her out freaked her out and so he went and checked himself out went to a bookstore bought uh, a bible start reading in John's gospel account in John 3:16 for God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him will not perish for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life and the guy got saved glory to God and got his health back and you know got his money back and was having brother Shambach over there you know for chicken <laughs> glory to God hallelujah uh, but what who Boy, that excites me. And, uh, but, but here's the thing. Uh, you know, he got delivered. He got set free by the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He'll do for you what he did for that guy that, you know, that I just told you about. Glory to God. So, hey, let me leave you with this. I'm just, I'm, I'm about ready to get up and run around the room here. Hey, let me leave you with this. Let's have a spirit of faith about us. Let's have a spirit of faith about us. Let's hang around people that have a spirit of faith. And in the midst of any circumstance, you know, we, we, we can have the victory and triumph through the Lord Jesus Christ, but we have to keep a can-do attitude about us. Uh, I like what one guy did that I knew a preacher years ago. He had some t-shirts made up and he had on them can-do kids. Well, we're children of the living God through faith in Jesus Christ. And, and he had can-do kids put on it on his t-shirt. I like that. Let's be can-do kids. Let's have a f spirit of faith about us, okay? Instead of a spirit of fear and, and doubt and unbelief, let's have a spirit of faith about us. Glory to God. So I'm going to leave you right now. And I can't do it like Brother Shambach. But in honor of him, because I love him so much and he did, he, he blessed my life so much, I'm going to leave you tonight with the same charge. And I can't do it like him. So, but I'm going to leave you with the same charge that he uh, would leave uh, all of us with every every night when he tune off, tune out of us out of his broadcast. And here here it goes. You don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. Okay, God bless you, and uh, I'll see you next time. Okay, uh, now I'm going to get up and run around the room a little bit. <laughs> All right, glory to God. Bye-bye.